and, right. and you're, you're full swing in business and everything. Yeah. What else is happening with family? Like how are they responding to, to this journey as Herman Davis, the entrepreneur? What's happening? We, I always felt that it, you always involve your family in your business. Okay. So they were all a part of it. Okay. Part of it. So what roles did they play and who was playing what? Well, my wife, she was generally the person that hid cashier at the window. Hey, it's, <laughs> it's good to, it's good to, it's, oh man, oh man. It, 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 it may happen to me one day, but definitely. If I get married, yes, yes. My, my future wife will be on the money. I'm with that. I'm with so, that thought. So we had the, the DJs and we had the coat check people and we had so the, the DJs were like what your nephews like who who was the DJs your nieces well friends friends, oh, friends that were friends. Okay. that were in the music because you know I uh, I was kind of associated with a lot of the mm -hmm. uh, record people and uh, because I had been doing that music even mm -hmm. before that so uh, a lot of the DJs this would give him give them visibility too yeah so a lot of DJs come and do the parties mm -hmm. and I have floor guards and and different game rooms and whatnot. It was a 43,000 square feet building mm -hmm. with many, many different activities. Okay. And uh, with with something like that in Detroit, uh, how how you, you were already in the business. And, right. and it was already going. But what were some of the things you were doing to get the crowd to interact with people just to keep the word out about, you know, this is where you need to come and roller skate? Well, we had that's why I community a lot, a lot with the with the uh, radio stations mm -hmm. and TV 62 at the time. Uh, and we had a we had a TV, we had a uh, weekly television show, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. For real, I never knew that. Yeah, a weekly, weekly television, television show. show. It, was, it was it called Northland or what was it? It called? was Northland. Yeah. Okay, and, uh, and what was 62. happening? What was happening on the show weekly? Well, we we have them showing people out there doing their thing on the floor and whatnot. And, oh yeah, that was, and I would I, I would be on the mic. I would be on the telling people, hey, come on out to Northland Roller Ring. This is the place you got to be because all your friends are here. I'm with it. I'm with I, I'm it. getting excited. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, and and with that whole field, uh, the roller skating, the people connecting with it, you met a lot of people because so many people have walked through those doors. Is it's such an iconic place, uh, even more so than I was hearing about an amusement park that wasn't that far, like down the street, like on Berg and like Seven Mile or whatever, that had like a roller coaster or whatever. But I was just interviewing a friend about Northland and what it meant like as like just one of the biggest landmarks in the city of Detroit for so long. Um, keeping that going and then interacting with some of the people, um, what what was the response that you were getting uh, back from all of the guests that were coming consistently? They were, they were gratified that they had the opportunity to come out and enjoy themselves. Matter of fact, I even see a lot of people today that tell me, you know, I met my wife at your place and I thank you. And I would mm. see the woman and say, I met my husband at your mm. place. And to this day, I haven't had one person to say, you know, I met that woman at your place. <laughs> I haven't had one person to say that to me. Hilarious. And so I always felt that it was a good place for folks to socialize and Meet and greet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So socialize and meet and greet. Uh, what was the uh, how how long were you guys operating? How long did you all operate it as a family? Ah, uh, I guess from nineteen from nineteen nineteen eighty six to about two thousand and five or somewhere around there. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. So almost like 20 years, basically. Yeah. yeah. 20 years. Yeah. 20 years. During yeah. that 20 years, that did you did you start noticing some of the changes as Detroit was, you know, during those 20 years as Detroit went through a lot of changes? Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of things were happening. Yeah, you guys lasted longer than Northland the Mall. See, the thing is, we, we were always 
that communication with organization and people. Mm-hmm. And we always made it a family-friendly operation that folks, if they didn't have anything else to do, mm-hmm. they knew we can go to Northland. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. They knew we can go to Northland. Because mm-hmm. I kept that in their, in their plan. And as you talk about being in their plan, uh, more so than anything, you've hired a lot of young people over the years. You gave a lot of people their start. Uh, giving opportunity, so forth and so on. Uh, and, and, and it's challenges that we deal with with our people in our community uh, as far as getting job readiness, uh, being prepared to deliver on tasks that are professional and build on customer service that you spoke to. What is it that when, you're, when you were interviewing so many young, young people to get some of the best from them, uh, what, what did you apply? I always, I always enter interfaced with the students, the same uh, training philosophies that we did at Chrysler Learning. Mm -hmm. Provide them with the opportunity to see what things they can do and encourage them to move forward and do it if they can. Mm -hmm. And I always talked to a lot of the kids that came through there and encouraged them, hey, if you if you like doing this, hey, no reason you're not doing it. <laughs> and I always tried to get them to to stay on an upbeat. Don't mm-hmm. don't let anything get you down. Mm-hmm. Because you you're the worst person to yourself when you let that happen. Mm. Because stay on the upbeat and friend people and learn to associate well. Black revolutionaries, distillery owners, Italian fashion retailers, and Motown Grammy winners all share their best stories never before told in any other media outlets on Detroit Is Different. Visit DetroitIsDifferent.com or download the Detroit Is Different app on Apple's App Store or Google's Play Store.